Let the meltdown begin. MMA meltdown on the Fight Network. I am Gabriel Morenci. Let's do this thing. We've got a great show. Robin Black's going to join us in studio. We're going to talk some fantasy MMA. We're going to recap uh, UFC 179. Joey Odessa will join us from Costa Rica. We'll crunch some numbers with uh, Joey. The UFC, once again, off. Bellator is off this week. We do have some uh, Titan uh, fighting going down. we got Mike Ricci actually fighting for a championship against uh, Yoshida. we got our videos of the week. And, of course, Jose Aldo is still the undisputed champion. The question is, for how much longer the Conor McGregor hype continues to grow? Cub Swanson's been promised a title shot if he beats Frankie Edgar. That's going to be an epic fight. we got a ton of great fights coming up around the corner. we got a kick-ass show coming up tonight right here on the Fight Network. MMA Meltdown continues. MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. I am Gabriel Morenci. Joey Odessa will join us in a couple of moments' time from Costa Rica. We'll crunch some numbers and hit the uh, rewind button, break down UFC 179. We welcome the Fight Network's Robin Black into the studio. Uh, Robin, it's been a little while since we've had you on MMA Meltdown, although you have been a regular on Game Time Decisions uh, with me on the Fantasy Sports Network, and we've been talking about uh, Fantasy MMA and specifically Counter Move. Yeah, and it's been fun. You know, counter move, we looked at this. We're like, well, you know about fighting. You know about odds and stuff. I know about technique and stuff. No problem. We can play this counter move stuff. It's actually kind of hard. Like, it's not cut and dried like, hey, if this guy wins, I'll win a counter move. It's knowing where the points are, knowing how to, how to draft the right team under the salary cap. It's a lot more challenging than, than we thought, but I think we're both starting to kind of really figure out some of the details of the game. We're a hell of a lot better now yeah. than when we started, Rob, because I remember when we started, our scores were like 250, yeah. 260, yeah. and now suddenly, you know, I'm upset unless I'm getting a 400. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it props to a Sean Sheehan, who's over at the Severe MMA. We participated in a, a media invitational. And uh, Robin Black was in it, a bunch of MMA media types, uh, Reed Kuhn, Fightnomics, uh, Crooklyn, TJ DeSantis, you yeah. go down the list, uh, pretty much everybody. And Deshaun uh, Sheehan takes it. And Counter Move have a badge. And, you know, they give like medals and badges and stuff like that, online badges. And they have a badge saying, I just uh, paid the rent because Gabriel Morenci sucks. At fantasy MMA, does uh, I I stomped on Robin Black badge too. Yeah, you stomped yeah. it. Yeah. They didn't. They never consulted with me no. about that, did you? No. And, no. You know, and I just I, started getting it on Twitter, and it was something about a blue-haired and it's me in a pretty nice shirt. But uh, yeah, it's just all of a sudden I'm being stomped I, on. I don't I know. know. I'm on Twitter, and suddenly I'm getting all kinds of like these counter move badges about how I suck. Yeah. Uh, basically, so They're I told hurtful. them over at counter move, look at my look at my points. I destroyed it this past Saturday, finished in second place. But to me and Robin, we have $500 free rolls. Uh, no UFC this week due to Halloween, although I'd like to see a Halloween yeah. UFC crowd. Yeah, yeah. Uh, recently, uh, I think we saw the natural dress up as Chuck Liddell the other day. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, that's, 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 yeah. That's, that wasn't bad. Yeah, that wasn't bad. So UFC I'm going to dress up as Gabe on Friday. You're gonna, are you actually going to shave your head? No, I am not going to do that. <laughs> it might not grow back. This is a one-shot thing. I <laughs> actually, yeah, you'd have to actually shave your head uh, to do that. But as far as the counter move, it's great stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll get a free roll going for the, the next card uh, back in Brazil. Manawa and uh, Shogun. But uh, it's a lot of fun. And shout out to counter move. Thanks for all the free rolls. Uh, everybody's having a great time. But those badges are hurtful. They're hurtful. So we talked about uh, Aldo and Mendez last week. I liked Aldo. And I don't think Aldo gets the credit that he deserves uh, because he's Brazilian. Mm -hmm. Maybe because he doesn't, uh, he doesn't speak English. Anderson Silva doesn't really speak English, and Anderson Silva is Brazilian. But Anderson Silva gets that, that he sort of has that sizzle and that, you know, the hype around him. Aldo just flies under the radar, and I tell you, Robin, every freaking fight is the fight that everybody says, this is the one that Aldo yeah. loses. And a lot of people are really convinced yeah. that this is the one. And 
Man, Aldo looked great. That was an angry yeah. Jose Aldo, wasn't an it? Amazing fight, amazing fight. And there weren't all that many people that were giving Mendez that much of a chance to look this good either. It's really split with Aldo. You'll talk to some people, they're like, are you kidding? Aldo will crush this guy. Talk to other people and it's always, and my thinking was that Mendez had improved so much. Yeah. And that Aldo, there's always talk because he's been in all these wars, because of how hard he trains, that some of his body's starting to break down. When that's the case, the, the, the most you can accomplish just stay the same. You know, you're you're getting hurt, so you go down, but you, you build it back up and you kind of stay the same. Although this was a legacy fight, man. Like anybody ever, you never pick against him, never underestimate him, never underestimate Especially his skills. In Brazil. Yeah, man, his skills. But even what kind of man he was, we talked about it on um, on five rounds this week. It wasn't just, you know, the low kick and the punches and mobility and his defense and stuff. He dug down deep. Every time he was in trouble, he hit back and he hit back even harder than he yeah. got hit. He bit down and he Fought like a dude, man. He was aggressive. Yeah. I saw people on Twitter before the fight saying, oh, he's going to run around and try to avoid getting taken down and try to get attacked. He didn't. Yeah. He brought the fight to Mendez. And another thing that, uh, that Aldo showed, Mendez tagged him a couple of times yeah. with a type of punches that knocked out the other guys yeah. that Mendez was just knocking yeah. out. But Mendez was knocking out mid-card guys, yeah. mid-tier guys, right? And you almost have to feel for him right now. Two title shots, yeah. sort of, you know, he's sort of like been Ben Henderson, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Joseph Benavidez is sitting in the same place. Uriah Faber is sitting in a pretty similar place. These guys <laughs> have saying. fought the top guys. They're the second best in the whole world, and they just can't quite do it. Mendez performed so beautifully, so skilled, so much heart, fought the kind of fight that we all love. I mean, his fight depended on pressuring yeah. Aldo. It had to be there. And Aldo's best way to beat that was to stand up to him. You know, not to dance, not yeah. to get picked away at, stand up to him. You ended up with such an incredible fight. You'd love to see it. A third one could happen. Mendez goes in and knocks out a few more people. Aldo, he looked so appreciative of such an incredible chance of such an amazing fight. Guys like that sometimes go, well, what the fuck, let's do it again. I think, I think that they, they poke the bear a little bit too much with Aldo as well. Yeah. Mendez was talking a lot of crap about Aldo being intimidated and scared and he moved the fight. And then you got Dana White bringing, uh, you know, bringing Conor McGregor alongside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In yeah. which you bring Conor out on stage, sort of, hey, Aldo, yeah. look, uh, here, here's, you know, here's our new guy. I didn't. I, I was gonna say Dana White's girlfriend, but I figured yeah. that would be a little bit uh, a bit much harsh. in a kidding in a kidding yeah. tone. Yeah. Although uh, over at MMA Junkie, uh, Ben Foles called him the teacher's pet. Yeah. But you know, you sort of get that feeling, right? Yeah. That, you know, you you're bringing in you're bringing in Conor McGregor here. Yet it makes it interesting because people were sort of you know sort of thinking that Aldo was bored, and there wasn't that mm -hmm. there wasn't that oh wow yeah. I can't wait to see that. Now we got a couple of great fights in this division. Cub Swanson, Frankie Edgar. Oh. So Cub's been promised a title yeah. shot if he wins. Yet you got McGregor fighting Dennis Seaver, and I assume yeah. he will win it's that fight. One. So where does this go from here? Yeah, I don't know, man. And, and the UFC, I mean, they don't mind. Like, if we're – people debate all this stuff. You go, well, this is not fair. Cub Swanson just won six fights in a row. If he could beat Edgar, that's a tough fight. Just won a seventh and beat Frankie Edgar. And, well, Conor McGregor, everybody – this kind of debate, it's just good for the UFC, man. It's good for the sport. It is. It's good for everything. So they sure don't mind this kind of thing. You know what happens to you, Robin? These it goes from people out there thinking, Conor McGregor is getting fast tracked, man. This is freaking ridiculous. And trust me, I talk to a lot of fighters off the record behind the mm. scenes. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the things they'll tell you, it's ridiculous the hype that Rousey gets. Yeah. One. Yeah. Second thing they'll tell you, it's ridiculous how the UFC is pushing Conor McGregor. Yeah. Right now. But they, of the two, they'll go, well, but Rousey is destroying everybody. And yeah. Conor hasn't yet. And they're both bringing money. It's almost yeah. jealousy. I'm not yeah. saying they're right in yeah. saying this, Robert. I'm saying that's what you hear, right? Now, I'm saying that's what you hear. There's people that think, oh, he's getting fast-tracked. And he really has, yeah. so to speak. But now... They've marketed him so right. We're almost salivating for yeah. it. When is it going to be McGregor? Yeah. They've, they've marketed this well, so we fight Seaver. Yeah. And then everyone's like, oh, is it Swanson? Or is, it's almost like college football, Robin, in which, you know, college football the world. I know you don't follow college yeah. football, but there's no, you don't know, just, the, the best team doesn't win. They vote on it. Right. They vote who the top four teams yeah. are. They're going to play each other. And people are like, it's the stupidest idea ever. And but they get engaged. They will tell college football knows 
People are talking about For it sure. in a passionate way. Yeah, and what, what, is, what is one of the other possibilities that's going to happen here? And I see it as a very real possibility. Jose Aldo, we need to enjoy every fight that he has because he's brilliant. He's even more brilliant than we thought when we saw him in this last fight. Legacy fight. He'll be remembered forever for his great fights, and this is one of them. But you, with guys like this, even though he's only going on 30, his body has been beaten up. He takes time. He misses a few fights. He gets yeah, injured. Yeah, yeah. So, shit, he might need some time off. What's going to happen? Cub Swanson starts talking. Edgar uh, or uh, Conor McGregor starts talking. They both have been promised one. I'm going to get what's mine. This guy, this crazy and Irishman both, both talking. both those guys aren't scared either. Yeah. They'll both say, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll do yeah. it. Yeah. And boom, we got us a whole bunch of money, and the winner of that one will be a star, wh whichever guy it is. Very, very, uh, very, very interesting uh, right there, Robin Black. All right, so uh, before we get out of here, a couple other things. Uh, Phil Davis, incredibly impressive. I thought yeah. that was Phil Davis's best performance ever. Yeah, I agree. It's, we forget sometimes. I mean, you see a guy have one bad one. Anthony Johnson will make anybody look bad on any given night. One guy has one bad thing. We're like, oh, no, he's not for real. Yeah, like, that's yeah. over. It's not a top. I'm as guilty yeah. as anybody of that. This guy is for real. Physicality, wrestling. Uh, when he gets in there and he's mentally good and he starts having success, he's a tough one to deal with, top five guy for Isn't sure. that so much pressure, Robin, if you think about that? For, no, we never think about it from the fighter's perspective, but you only fight two, three times a year. Yeah. You don't have a lot of opportunity to make the impression, so when you lose, it's amazing, isn't yeah. it? Like, one loss, and I thought, too, the way Johnson beat him up standing up, mm -hmm. it was like, man, like, he, he really got beat yeah. up. I don't know, Glover might be able to, but... When push came to shove, I actually did well. I went 5-0 and oh with my picks. I took Phil Davis. Yeah, good. So I figured if he could take Machida down, he could take the chair. Yeah, down. true. And he did, and he looked great doing it. Phil's one of these guys. They're, they're all different. Some guys are crazy fighters. Some guys are, you know, uh, a driven monster. He's an athlete. He's an analytical, high-performance athlete. And sometimes those guys are really tough to deal with. Robin Black. Check him out on the Fight Network. Check him out on Game Time Decisions with me on the Fantasy Sports Network. And check out CounterMove.com. Uh, guys, UFC will be back. Uh, what, uh, not this uh, weekend, but the following weekend. And we'll have a free roll up, and uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's free to enter. Check it out. MMA Meltdown continues. Joey Odessa will join me from Costa Rica.